I've never seen something like this. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Bishop's RV in Coldwater, Michigan on a sunny Monday morning at the time I'm recording this at least. Behind us, another one of these little Winnebago Hike 100s. This is a different kind of critter and uh, I'd be really curious to know what you think about this. They're kind of calling it their toy hauler. It's not a toy hauler in a traditional sense, but I understand why they call it that. Because in the back here, you've got that, you know, double wide open cargo door, uh, but it's not like a ramp toy hauler model. So like if you've got e-bikes or maybe, I haven't measured out, maybe a small kayak. I'm not sure how well a kayak would fit in here. But um, you know, non-traditional toys. That's where this might come into play right here. The other thing is, you don't, it, like, forget the whole thing I just said about it being any level of toy hauler. This could be a small, compact family bunk camper, and, and in a in a very different way, so you actually have room to bring all of your family, you know, bikes and toys and all of your yard games and stuff like that. You can use this like a little cargo mover. It could be a solo camper, maybe you and the dog, you and the cat, something like that, you and a bird or an iguana, whatever pet you might have. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, again, it could be... Uh, a buddy hunting camper it could be a couple ladies on the fly this is something that i don't think it really fit it doesn't fit into the traditional little pigeonholes of the rv industry um now there are uh, two inch thick walls on these which is interesting they have the independent suspension system on this which is a little bit different from what you might have seen from like say ember out there you've got that exoskeleton cargo rack mount you've got a 200 watt factory solar package that um, you could theoretically expand a little bit, but the roof is pretty much occupied on this one. It has an electric induction cooktop that's totally portable. Like, they put some Class B motorhome feels and features into this thing. Uh, and that'll also be true when you get up to their interesting little corner wet bath on this. Now, this is certainly not for everybody. But even if this jelly ain't your jam, I'd really appreciate it if you tuned in and uh, watched through this. And just kind of let me know what you think about this one. And it's got a couple good points. It's got a couple hiccups. I'll try to show you the good with the bad. Hit that subscribe button if you appreciate that and let's get rolling now in our little floor plan and flash footage you already kind of saw how all the different flex functions of this thing but i do want to kind of just give you another peek here where you can have it in like double bed mode um it can act as a uh you know certainly you know two to four person dining. I think you could almost squeeze six people in here if you really wanted. And then of course the whole thing can open up for cargo space. And that's the whole point of this one. Like it is the ultimate flexible little camper and kind of like you're seeing here, depending on what you plan on doing with it, you only need to manipulate as much or as little of this stuff as you please. Apologies for the sunshine beaming into the uh, the lens there. I feel like J.J. Abrams with all the uh, the lens flares. The dude's got an addiction for that stuff. If you don't know what I'm talking about, sorry, I'm a nerd. Anyway, watch one of those Star Trek movies that he did. Anyway, um, the uh, the idea here is like, what if you're just one person? I would just leave the one bench down. I would, you know, bring the table in or out as I wanted. I would roll that down into a sleeper as I needed. I, I just, you know, I don't think you need to worry about it. Now, if there's one thing I feel they, uh, we'll say, missed on here, the rear door doesn't have any sort of like screen function. That would have been really cool. Now the windows in those doors, they do open for airflow. You can see the backlighting on those a little bit. To me, that would be a, uh, a pretty awesome little feature and um, upgrade on these. I'm actually just gonna see if I can climb right up this thing in real time and hey, look at that. So if I sit on this bench right here, um, obviously, you know, we're, we're not staring at much cause it's a little trailer, but notice you got those snap on kind of window blinds right there. So you actually have decent views outside of your campsite. Not to mention, depending on what you're doing here, you either have the rear windows or you've just got this whole sucker wide open in here. Now notice that there's, um, there's lights kind of like all around there. Now with the bench on the left flipped up, it's kind of blocking all of that. Uh, and uh, a little look at the, you know, overhead bunk space in the up position. And you know what? We should probably take a look at that from the inside, right? So I figured, why not actually show you how it works? <laughs> so this is actually a very classic manual drop, uh, like upper bunk. It's not a Happy Jack power system, so it's not eating into your very precious battery supply, which I think is cool here. There's actually a little pin lock over here, but there's even a magnet holdback to keep that thing from jingle jangling around. And with only one little chicken arm, you just pull down on the back side of this thing, and there she goes. And similarly, in the front, you just pull that sucker right down, you 
bunk your head in the back a little bit. I don't think you're supposed to be sitting on the benches below the dropping thing when it comes down. I just know that smarts a little bit, and smarts might be something I could use a little bit more of. So when the, uh, the sleeper's in the down position, here's what we're looking at right there. Um, note to the lack of crown molding where the wall meets the roof line. That's an, that's an interesting little kind of fit and finish detail here that I like to point out whenever I see it. Now, something else I want to point out is actually what's happening down here. Because if you look at this next to the furnace, there's just a dead pocket. You might be wondering, well, you know, what the heck is in there? Well, that's almost like a sofa side or bedside, like headboard pocket, essentially. Um, it looks to be sized where, you know, if you have 110 power available, you could maybe have a CPAP machine running in it. You see household outlets. Now, the USB plugs that you're seeing in this RV, um, you have one standard USB and then you have a USB type C. There's a lot of that starting to work its way into the RV industry. I'm glad to see it, actually. Um, now, let's, as long as we're talking storage, Let's actually crack that thing open uh, up there and take a look around. Now, interestingly, when we're talking storage, I will briefly give you a look actually at the bathroom because I can see a lot of people not wanting a bathroom in an RV. There's plenty of people who actually request things like that, like, hey, Josh, don't they make an RV that just doesn't have a bathroom? Like, I'll use the cat litter bumper dumper. I'll use the, uh, the parked facilities. I don't need a bathroom in my RV. So again, taking some notes from their Class B stuff, they basically turn that into sort of like the ability to have a walk-in pantry, which is very cool. Now, you may have noticed uh, that was a 12-volt DC compressor fridge down there at the bottom. That little countertop extension drawer slides out under the convection microwave. Now, the only hiccup with that is it's not really going to work when you're off-grid. So... You know, what if, you know, you, you, you do want to get away from the parks, but you want uh, to, to run all your outlet kind of stuff. Does this have any kind of in, uh, outlet inversion to it? And the answer to that is really, it depends. The base version that we're looking at here today, no. It does not have any sort of um, allowances for an inverter. Now, some aftermarket work could be done to add one, but they are making an FLX version of this. If you're not familiar with that, FLX is basically Winnebago's way of saying advanced solar and inverter uh, kind of stuff. I couldn't decide if I wanted to say inverter or inversion, so it came out with inversion. I sound like gold member from Austin Powers. You guys, yeah. Why am I moving on? Refocusing scene, and uh, the you get the idea. If you if you want to get something like this made for more off grid use, they do that. But they they basically make an A or B. You can't take this and and upfit it into the FLX version without a lot of aftermarket work that is not approved or warranted by Winnebago. So if you have that done, make sure the person who's doing it backs their work and get that in writing, folks. A little pro tip from Uncle Josh. But some people do want a bathroom in an RV. Not everybody, uh, you know, wants to be uh, quite that down to earth. Now, this is a confirmation of something I wasn't sure about in my last Winnebago hike video. And thank you, viewers, for helping correct my idiot self on that. The toilet can turn, basically, because by default, sometimes from the factory, the toilet lid faces the outer wall of the RV, which makes it very, very difficult and brings a whole new meaning to bathroom yoga that I've never personally seen before. Notice over on the left, the toilet paper holder or the butt napkin roller, if you are uh, into technical terms, it has a little shield on it to keep it from getting soaked. Little mini sink in there, which, you know, surprising that you don't have to put your, uh, you know, your bathroom hands in the kitchen sink, even in this little thing. And I was very surprised with the ceiling height uh, in that shower. That came as a very pleasant shock to me. Now, one of the things I thought about, I'm not sure, like, even if you're like, yeah, it's a stupid worthless sink, you know what that is useful for? Holding your like shampoos and conditioners and body washes and all that kind of stuff while you are showering. That is very cool. Now, the FLX version that I mentioned, that will actually have the uh, the shower miser system. And like we saw earlier, if you want to just, you know, add the shelves for storage, you can. You can get them out of the way. You could use it as closet space. This is a very multifunctional space right here. Now, if you watch my videos regularly, you know I like to show you the RVs in what I call road mode. And in this one, I think that's kind of what road mode's going to encompass right there with 
everything folded up and totally out of the way. Uh, down here, you've got those, uh, you know, cargo tie downs. So, you know, depending on what you're loading into this, you can make sure that you got everything uh, all secured. I'm still wondering, a single person small kayak, if you could go corner to corner on that thing from the entry door back here to make that work, I don't know. Um, now, in the, uh, the back doors here, you may have noticed there are breeze windows. You can see the sun kind of shining through there. But they've got kind of toy hauler snap-on uh, sort of blackout blinds. Maybe not total blackout, but you're also not definitely not getting directly stabbed in the eyes by the sun over here. So you can slap those on or off. Now, that is a deadbolt locking door, by the way. Very important item. And look at this little kind of, again, the sort of Class B functions that they have in here. That little flip-down um, just utility uh, table, shelf, whatever you want to call it. Now, when the electric uh, cooktop is not in the box, it fits on there much, much better. But the fact is you can get the idea. And, and with this picnic table floating around, you could put that wherever you want it. It doesn't necessarily have to be used in the RV. Now, above that rear double, I don't know, toy hauler cargo door, whatever you want to call it, um, there is a, a batwing awning included with this. And one of the cool things about these, no options. All of these are going to look exactly like they look right here. And frankly, I appreciate that. Um, it is uh, very confusing for both people at dealerships as well as people shopping for RVs. Which one am I looking at? Does it match the video? Is it different from the video? What options do you have? Why does that affect the price tag? All that kind of stuff. They've eliminated all that conversation here, just made it simple, easier, and direct. Uh, you may have noticed there's also a, uh, a cargo rack on the back there. Now the spare tire is belly mounted on this. Um, depending on the kind of uh, RVing you're going to do, you may consider adding uh, a, uh, a second spare tire using that rear uh, receiver hitch right there. That could be a very handy function for you. You've got Goodyear Wrangler tires, 16 inch uh, Goodyear Wranglers at that. And with this one only having that, um, you know, onboard gray tank for exhaust, that's the only sort of like sewer outlet that you have. It has a cassette style toilet. We'll see uh, a peek at in just a second. But I love this. Above the wheel wells, you have this, uh, these like side saddle storage bags and uh, they, they magnet uh, lock up, basically, to get them up out of your way. Just little smart functions like that. Very, very cool. These are also power stabilizer jacks. You can see the uh, buttons to operate those right here. Um, the uh, little brush guards, they don't have anything on them that says don't walk on this. I know that uh, a little over 200 pounds currently, I've clambered up and down uh, that ladder and used those brush guards as a step a few times, and it felt very sturdy underfoot. And speaking of that ladder, let's take a peek up there. Now, <laughs> again, in theory, their charge controller would allow you to add some extra solar, but the roof is pretty much occupied. There's just enough space to kind of twinkle toes, tiptoe around up there. But that 200 watt solar package giving us some good extended um, off-grid kind of function here, not to mention a good battery maintainer. You also see that exoskeleton both on the roof and down the nose, depending on what kind of stuff you want to strap to this thing. Um, about one of the only nitpicks I have for something that I think is sort of intended to get off the beaten path a little bit, is a single propane tank does feel a little bit, uh, little bit limiting. That could be uh, increased to dual tanks. You just have to add a, a tank holder and a split regulator and you're good to go. It could be done. It's just kind of, that's just the only thing on this that really made me go, hmm, weird. Now the body of the RV is six and a half foot wide, but when you read the specs on the spec chart for these, they read wider because that's measuring out to the axles. And with the axle sticking outside of the body, that is something that will give this some awesome towing and going stability. Notice that they're not using the stable steps on these so they don't have to flip up and uh, you know eat into your potential interior loading space. Not to mention, if you're just on a wacky, funky grade wherever you happen to park this thing, it's uh, really nice that these steps, I mean, if you can find a place to park where you can't fold these open, you probably shouldn't park there. I'm just, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Now, uh, we already kind of saw the cargo box on the other side, but this one has an interesting little dual function. Not only can you just use it as the saddlebag storage, but it actually flips open and lays down into being something like, um, like a little griddle stand. Now, you, you see that there is a magnet hold back there. I just didn't think to actually latch that, but you get the idea. Like, this is yet another place that you could potentially use that uh, electric induction cooktop. Now, down here, 
for ride and handling. This thing really blends it two worlds together. Dexter and Norco kind of partnered up on this system. You see it's a mini torsion axle, but it still has that coilover spring action, and you might notice how they're not connected. That is an independent suspension system. It's just a very unconventional one. Um, the idea here is that it sort of blends um, highway towing comfort with a little bit of what I'm going to call off-pavement uh, functionality. Now, I I'm, I'm not going to, uh, that word off-road, off-road, it gets thrown around very willy-nilly in this business. And it's something that I, I wish they didn't do uh, near as much as they, they want to. Like true overlanding, going over rocks and unbeaten paths. That's, that's not what this is for. But zipping down life's highways and just getting off the beaten path, being able to, uh, you know, overnight in the park and then maybe uh, spend a little bit of time, you know, untethered, that's where this guy comes in. Now, the underbelly you might have seen is enclosed, still has the holding tank heaters there for the holding tanks that it does have. It does all the other Winnebago things. It just does a bunch of other stuff in a very different way, too. It's like somebody took a little miniature, uh, you know, what do I want to say? Almost like a no boundaries and mash some class B stuff into it. It's a very different animal. So like I said, this isn't for everybody, but how do you envision this being used? How would you use it? Or if you're not somebody who would use this whatsoever, how can you imagine somebody using it? Like, I'm just, I'm kind of curious, you know, this is, they're, they're not the very first to ever do anything like this. It's the first I've really had my, uh, a chance to put my hands on anything like this, but I'm I'm really wanting to know what you folks think about this one. Um, I will leave you a link in the video description to check uh, the pricing and availability. If we have them in stock at our stores, we will have uh, pricing listed on our site unless someone's taking one home or if it just landed. But typically, if it's, not, if it's in stock, it's on our website and there'll be pricing right there. That's, that's the important thing I need to provide. Sorry, I get to the end of these videos and I just start rambling, although that's pretty much what I've done the whole time and I'm doing it still. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Take care, stay safe. Have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.